Hey there. I pray that you all are doing well. I pray that you're staying safe and that you're happy, that you're healthy over all life domains. <clears throat> it's been a few days. As I mentioned, if I don't have anything to say, if God is impressed upon my heart to say something, I won't. But in this moment, I want to talk about just small acts of kindness, especially the ones that aren't done in front of anyone. The quiet ones, the ones that are just because that's who that person is or what that circumstance dictated at that moment. A couple stories I read <clears throat> over the last couple of days and let's be clear, my mood has been um, different lately. A lot of thinking going on. Probably way too much, to be honest. But the first story I read <clears throat> was about a young woman. And I think probably everybody has seen this but me. So bear with me if you know the story. But there was a, <clears throat> excuse me, a young lady that worked in a Waffle House. And she had been saving her money to go to college, but she was a faithful worker. She knew quite a few of her customers, repeat customers and so forth. And there was an elderly gentleman that used to come pretty much, I think, every day. And on this one particular day, the Waffle House was jam-packed and she had tons of people she was waiting on. But after she had served him his food, she noticed he wasn't eating and he was really, really struggling. So she took the time to go back to him and she cut up his food. His hands were shaking. His hands couldn't really grip the utensils and so forth and so on. And she cut up his food without any fanfare, any anything. But what she didn't know is another patron who was a regular noticed it and recorded it. And that person posted it to her Facebook site and said, small acts of kindness. And I don't know, maybe this is a theme for me because I think I talked about paying forward and kindness and Jennifer Lopez and her uh, Thanks a Million Challenge. But I think kindness is underrated. Anyway, um, it got thousands of hits, of course. And this young lady had no idea this was going on because for her, what she did for that man was a part of her job. So subsequently... The mayor took notice, um, he gave her a citation, and they named that day, um, named a day after her in where she lived, but it also got all the way to te Texas Southern University, and they ended up offering her a $16,000 scholarship for school. Small act of kindness, no one was supposed to be watching. This is just what I do. And that warmed my heart, but it also got me thinking about not only what are the small acts of kindness that we can, what are the small things we can do, but what are the things that people have done for us and we kind of maybe didn't even notice it or maybe we missed it somehow being busy or just a myriad of things that could have gone on, but did we miss something? So fast forward then to this evening, and I'm going to go backwards in a minute,
but I read an article about <clears throat> the Green Bay Packers were playing the Detroit Lions. And Aaron Jones, who is a receiver, is amazing. Um, his father passed from COVID not that long ago. His father, I believe, was like 56 years old. And on a necklace, he had a part of his father's ashes. Now, during the Detroit game, he scored four touchdowns. And one of the touchdowns he scored, he lost that necklace somewhere in the end zone with his father's ashes. And when he realized it, I guess he may have said something to whomever, but when they interviewed him, when they did the press interview, he basically said, you know what, my dad would be okay with this because he said, if you're going to lose him, lose it in the end zone because you scored a touchdown. And he thought no more of it. Well, someone else did. One of the trainers was digging in the end zone looking for that necklace until 1.45 in the morning. No one asked him. No one was watching. Nothing. He just went and looked for it. And he found it. And he returned it to Aaron Jones. And he not only thanked the man, but he said, this goes to show you, we're not just a 52-man roster. We're human beings to each other. We're people to each other here. It's more than football. That was quite moving. So I said I was going to go backwards. So I've not been in a public person mood of late. And that is what it is. And I had to go out, though. There were some things I needed to do. I tried to do them online. That wasn't working. And I actually had to go out. And I found myself in the food lion, which is the place that I usually go the most. And they actually kind of know me there because if I'm using a scooter... I can't reach anything on the top shelf. So there are very, very kind people that I've gotten to know pretty well that will help me shop for especially things that I can't reach. And tonight, I just didn't feel like it. But it had to be done. And I, I left the house with the... <sighs> Really, I've got to do this. Like, I put it off for two whole days, which was ridiculous considering the other two things that I needed to do. I just, I couldn't mentally and emotionally make myself go and do what I needed to do. But today I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. For once, you might have an ounce of the energy that you need to go and do this. And even if you don't, Get with God, ask him if you can go, and if you can, if he'll give you what you need to get it done. And I did that, and of course he answered me, as he does. And I went, and the first thing I initially intended to do was to go to the post office. I didn't have to go because the mailman was literally right there at the moment I walked out of my door. So I said, okay, God, I'm supposed to be out today. And I did go out and the sky was beautiful and it was 72 degrees and there was a nice breeze. And But I'm always hesitant when I go out because I'm like, what if I do this, this, and this, and I hurt myself? How many days am I going to be down? That's always in my head. I did a few things, and I was exhausted, but I had to make food line my last stop, and I always do because they close at 11 at night, and I went, it was never my intention, I sat in my car for like five minutes, like I was, as they say in football, I was gassed, I had no more energy, I had nothing left, and I'm like, why? Am I doing this? 
just do it tomorrow. And then I thought, okay, I'm out here for a reason. God has given me the ability to even be able to do as much as I've done. He's blessed me along the way. I'm safe. All these things I started thinking about. And I'm like, get off your duff and go in the food line. And I said, just pick up the, the couple things you want. If it's on a top shelf, forget it. Just get in and get out. And what I was looking for was on the top shelves. And I'm looking around at the staff, and there are not very many people around. Typically, if there's not a lot of people around working, I won't ask because that pulls somebody from the cash register or from the floor and that kind of thing. But I didn't really have an option because I've also injured my arm and I can't pull, push, that kind of stuff. So the young woman that said she would help me, she the minute she walked over and said, hi, I'll help you. When I tell you her smile just lit up the whole place. It was just the joy of life kind of smile. It wasn't a something external is making me smile. It was one of those, this smile is just in me kind of smiles. And I thought, huh. I remember when I used to be that person. How did I get so far away from her? How did I get so far away from that, Chris? Because a smile was the thing that just kind of came natural to me. And over time, I realized it was one of the easiest gifts to give to another person. When did I turn into Moody Judy? <laughs> so we're going around the store and... I'm trying to figure out like the app and the MVP coupons and all of this stuff. And I'm just, and she's just smiling and going along and just had a lilt in her voice and a little vim and vigor in her step. And eventually I realized that the low, low energy that I came in the store with had been replenished through a smile and a kindness which is a small act and she didn't do it in front of anybody for show to record it to post it it was nothing it was just her saying I want to help you because there were three other people when I said is there anyone that can help me they <laughs> they all kind of did this <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That just tickles me. I know I've been that person before too, so um anyway by the time it was time for me to leave and I said, Okay, that's it, I'm finished. I'm so grateful for your help. She looked at me and she said, Oh, you have to go. And I was like, yeah, she said, well, I'm coming to your car with you. And I was like, you don't need to do that. I'm, I'm good. She was like, no, we going all the way. We doing this. And I was like, wow, that just, it replenished my spirit. I mean, my body feels worn out, but my spirit, just a small act of kindness and a smile. That's it. I said, sometimes that's all you need. And you don't know what people are struggling with when they come, when you come in contact with them. However, that might be on your job, walking down the street, <clears throat> sitting in traffic on a bus in a grocery store. You have no idea what is happening inside of someone and it reminded me, it made me remember Crystal, who would offer a smile 
just because it felt good to smile. Didn't cost me anything, didn't change the direction of my day. It was just who I was. And I miss her. And I became more aware of her not being around through a small act of kindness from a very kind young lady. And I don't know um, what the purpose the Lord had for me to speak about this for this evening other than to share my testimony that in my tough times that I've been experiencing lately that act of kindness lifted my spirit and reminded me of the girl, the young woman, Crystal, whose small act of kindness every day was simply a smile. What is yours? What's your small act of kindness? No fanfare and entrance. Nobody knows. No one's watching. You think. Because my mother says somebody always sees you. She did. She used to always say it doesn't matter what you think. You're hiding. You're Nobody's around. Somebody's going to see you. So maybe just wear a smile. So what if somebody laughs? Like why is she smiling to herself? Doesn't matter. God knows. And he already knows who needs to see that smile. Who needs to hear hello, even if they don't say it back. So, that's it. I pray that you get something out of this. And that you will be blessed. I love you guys. No strings attached. Good night.